Hey everybody and welcome back to Age of Strife. We're going to do some quick level up stuff right now and then we'll be on our way. So, uh, Kreia, we already know that you are going to take the average, the, the nice handy dandy seven, instead yep. of rolling. I like being safe. <laughs> um, I think after this episode, we're going to actually change it from rounding up on the half HP to rounding down on the half HP. Because that's, that's what it is. So that way there's always like, you know, the the safer option is a little bit less adva advantageous than the the, the that roll. Makes sense. Yeah. But we'll, we'll let it slide for this time because that's how we did it at the, the start when you guys did HP. Um, okay. uh, Aldis and Or, are you guys rolling or averaging? I already took it. I'm at 30 max. Okay, health you take an average. I'm rolling. I'm going to roll every single time. That's why we love you. <laughs> so D12 be... plus something? Plus three. Yeah. So. Oh, very nice. Oh, wow. That's cool. good. Now I'm tempted to roll, but I don't want to risk nope, it. Nope, nope. You took the average. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> took it. Uh, did you also add your con bonus there, Kreia? Um. Uh... No, I didn't. Oh, wait, you add con? Yeah, you always add so your that... con mod. I didn't yeah, so whatever one. your average was, like if you took, you know, if I took the average of seven and then plus three, it would be 10, mm -hmm. ultimately. Yeah. yeah. So the same uh, for you. So my max is now 35. Cool. Um, and then all this, you're going to get either a feat or uh, some stat bonuses, right? I am choosing a feat, and the feat I am choosing is called Sharpshooter. I have, and this is what it says, you have mastered ranged weapons and can make shots that others find impossible. You gain the following benefits. Attacking at long range does no longer impose a disadvantage in your ranged weapon attack rolls. Your ranged weapon attacks ignore half cover and three quarters cover, so that's good. And before you make an attack with a ranged weapon that you are proficient with, I'm proficient with shortbow, you can choose to take a minus five penalty to the attack, and if the attack hits, you can add plus ten to the attack's damage on top of what it is. That includes sneak attack. So that's potentially a shit ton of damage. Mm -hmm. And I only have plus five, I have plus five in my attack rolls already, so it's just a flat twenty now if I want to do that. Yeah. It's pretty nice. So yeah, sharpshooter, and I'm at thirty health now. Sweet. <laughs> pretty strong, actually. That's really good. Okay, uh, or in Kreia, you guys get to choose which path of the Berserker you want to go down. Or, uh, sorry, sorry, Path of the Barbarian, or Totem Path, or whatever. So you can do Path of the Berserker, or you can do a Totem Path. Ooh, that's, that was difficult to get Right, out. so maybe we should just give like some like information to the viewers about this stuff, just so they kind of like get an idea for what the options are here. So it says, um, for some barbarians, rage is a means to an end, that, uh, the end being violence, obviously. Uh, the path of the berserker is a path of untrammeled fury, slick with blood. As you enter the berserker's rage, you thrill in the chaos of battle, heedless of your own health or well-being. So the options are, you can choose uh, frenzy, uh, mindless rage, uh, intimidating presence. So that's all stuff that goes within the path of the berserker, or you can choose the path of the totem warrior. So this is a totally different, like, you know, build for a barbarian moving forward. And it says, the path of the totem warrior is a spiritual journey as the barbarian accepts a spiritual am an a spirit animal as a guide, protector, and inspiration. In battle, your totem spirit fills you with supernatural might, adding to ma uh, magical fuel to your barbarian rage. Most barbarian tribes consider a totem animal to be kin to a particular clan. In such cases, it is unusual for an individual to have more than one total totem animal spirit, uh, though exceptions exist. And the options within that is stuff like, uh, where is it? Um, right, so totem spirit would be um, bear, eagle, or wolf. Yeah. So, so what are you I, guys going to do? I know what I'm going to do. Um, so for Kreia, uh, when we first met her, she um, 
was described as also having a big, huge, gashing scar that's like jagged and cuts through her right um, deltoid muscle. That's what it's, is that what it's called? Fuck, I don't know. I'm terrible at naming things like that. Um, so yeah, she's got this big, jagged, like, like indented scar um, that she got when she was younger from a wolf. So we explained that a few weeks ago, and I'm going to go um, the path of the wolf which specifies uh, while you're raging, your friends have advantage on melee attack rolls against any creature within five feet of you that is hostile to you. Uh, the spirit of the wolf makes you a leader of hunters. Nice. It's basically buff, 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 buff. Yeah, like a group buff, which is kind of nice. Um, I had a question about the bear. Okay, it says, while raging, you have resistance to all damage except psychic damage. The spirit of the bear makes you tough enough to stand up to any punishment. So basically, instead of when I'm raging, I have ha I have resistance to damage to, like, piercing and... Bludgeoning slash and slashing. Yeah, bludgeoning. But you also get this actually makes me across the board except psychic. So, like, right, any so spell... Fire, acid, cold force anything other than psychic <clears throat> any like yeah. actual force in the world that is not like mind affecting you have resistance to that damage yeah i think i think i'm going to hold on let me give me just one second um i'm gonna go with uh yeah i'll just go with the bear then so i'll take the path of the the totem warrior and then i'll just go with bear okay so what is the bear bonus yes, brother what's that the bear the bear bonus is that i have resistance to all damage except psychic damage That's so good. i'm basically whenever i'm raging i'm gonna be taking half damage no matter what unless it's psychic damage so while you're raging or not raging or no while i'm raging so originally it was just piercing bludgeoning slashing damage now it's across the board fire cold it. and all that shit that's yeah, really magical good damage everything really except for psychic so basically he's much more of a tank and i'm much more of a party buffer right okay that's pretty damn good. is there are there any other things that we do for level up or are you guys good i think that's everything for a barbarian um, you all gain an extra question. hit die Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, yeah. Hit die. Um, Neil. Yes? If I crit while I'm sneak attacking, do I get... Does that double the sneak attack as well? I think it does. Because <clears throat> if that's the case with the sharpshooter thing, it's... I can do, like, over 50 damage with one max damage sneak attack. Critical hit, crit, 196. Crit. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at that. That's a very, very good question to have answered. Um, That's pretty when fucking strong. When you score a critical hit, you get to roll extra dice for the attack's damage against the target. Roll all of the attack's damage dice twice and add them together, then add any relevant modifiers as normal. To speed up fray, you can roll all the damage dice at once. For example, if you score a critical hit with a dagger, roll 2d4 damage rather than d4, and then add your relevant ability modifier. If the attack involves other damage dice, such as that from Rogue's sneak attack feature, you roll those dice as well. So if you crit with your bow, you would do 2d6 plus 4d6, and if you had sneak attack, plus 10, plus the whatever your normal dex modifier is. Three. Okay. So we're That's looking at 6 times 6 plus 10 plus 3. So we're looking at 49 points of damage max. That's, Damn! <laughs> that's so crazy. Okay. And at level 5, it would go up by another 6 points. Uh, another 12 points possible. So. Yeah. That's crazy shit. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. I get uncanny dodge, too, next level, which is... Ooh. If an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, it just it's half damage. Nice. From now on, like that. What? That is so strong. It's, it's Do you insane. have to use your you use your reaction to half the damage, right? You can use your reaction. Yeah. Okay. So that means you can do it like once part. per round, which is but still half damage on attack is nice. It makes you like That's a little good. mini barbarian. Right. Okay. Question. You said something about hit hit die. Yeah. So you should have a number of hit die equal to your level. So you should have 3d12 hit dice 
Um, and right now you should have all of them available. So underneath your HP, there's that little rounded box. Under hit dice, just to do 3d12 and then check off three of the boxes. Anytime that you take a, a full night's rest, you are allowed to expend those hit die. Um, which means that, you know, if you have 3d12 sitting around, you can roll 3d12 plus three times your con mod and gain that much HP back. And after a week of resting, you gain half your hit dice back. Rounded down. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything uh, proficiency bonus-wise at level three that we... I think proficiency bonus goes up at level five. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that was not Three. nearly as uh, as complicated as I thought it would. Be. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a lot level more complicated. Level four is too. the is the um, bigger one where there's more going on, isn't it? Because you you get the um, don't you get like a, an ability? Yeah, bump? you get the feet or the ability scores. I think it, this just went by so quickly because you guys already knew what you were going to do for barbarians. Yeah. You, we've right. like talked about it at character creation. Um, so I think there's nothing left to do but say our goodbyes. Is there anything that you want to make people in the world aware of? Maybe this PAX yeah. thing? Maybe this this children's hospital thing? <laughs> I don't know. There, there's yeah, you want, you want to go, Shannon? Or you, want, okay. uh, you go first, bud. Um, well, for those, I mean, for those of you who watch uh, my stream, um, I'm going to be, well, first of all, starting next week on Thursday, there's going to be a panel at uh, MIT. Um, it's going to be me, it, uh, it me, JP. It's also going to, uh, LOL, Renee, you guys know, Gassy Mexican's girlfriend, and then um, uh, Soma, or not Soma, I'm sorry, Sir Scoots. So uh, the four of us are going to be a panel at MIT. It is going to be um, on front page of Twitch. It is at 6 p.m., Eastern I'll put the link time. in chat. Yeah, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And basically, we're just going to be talking about streaming and uh, I guess kind of educating people that aren't necessarily familiar with Twitch about what we do and how we make it a career and kind of all the facets that go with that. So it's a pretty cool thing because it's a, it's a you know, it's a, a well-known very credible school and or university. And then, you know, on, on top of that, you know, we, we're, we're taking Twitch to kind of different, uh, uh, venue, not venues, but different audiences. And we're starting to kind of reach out. So it's kind of a bit, it's kind of a, a big deal. And, Dude, and we you're talking it. streaming at MI fucking T. That yeah. is a massive deal. MIT is up there. That's okay. really cool. Yeah, it's really cool that, that a site like Twitch is getting recognition where they can have a panel talking about what the phenomenon is at something like MIT. That's really awesome. Yeah, and the reason that was able to come together was because of one of their professors over there, uh, uh, TL. She, she's writing a book on live streaming and esports. So um, there's no title on it right now. She's still doing research. For those of you who watch my stream, she came, she flew down and stayed a morning while I did a stream with me just to sit on the sidelines and kind of watch. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, but other than that, uh, it packs is happening directly after that all weekend. Uh, three of us are going to be there. Shannon's going to be there. Soma's going to be there. And so I'm not going to be broadcasting very much. The only other time I'm going to broadcast, uh, is going to be on Sunday from two to three thirty PM from the Twitch booth itself. So if you want to see my stream, that's when I'm going to be. And then like a week after that, I'm going for another three or four days to Memphis for uh, the St. Jude Summit. St. Jude Research Hospital is flying um, some of us out there to uh, talk about raising uh, money for charity for what they do. If you guys don't know what St. Jude is, basically it's a research center for um, children with terminal illnesses. And all their research is a global resource. So if they come up and guys, it is insane. I wish I, I wish we could take cameras and stuff inside the facility. We can't. I wish I could show you guys just how awesome it is in there. Um, but basically, all the research they do can be used by anybody to try to help with some of these things that these, uh, un you know, it's it's very unfortunate. You know, like whenever somebody you know gets cancer, like an adult, it's like that's heartbreaking. You know, not only to themselves but the, their families and everything. But when it comes to kids, you know, that's a that is a heavy, heavy, heavy burden for a young for a young person. And um, 
So they, they do everything they can. If you're accepted into their program and your child, you know, you know, does have a, a terminal illness, uh, they provide for you. Sh they give you a, a, like a, like a house, like an apartment, they pay for all your food. They make sure the whole family is set. So all you do is, is focus on your child getting better and having a positive attitude in that process. And uh, it is amazing, but I'm going to be gone doing that as well. There will be a, a number of other broadcasters that are, are there as, you know, also. So that's what's kind of coming up with me. Sorry, I'm kind of long-winded, but kind of a lot is happening. That's an important topic. Where is? Yeah. yeah. So. Yep. Um, I'm just going to tag on to that, that I'll be at PAX East. So if you're in the Boston area, if you're heading to PAX East, then come say hi to, you know, a whole bunch of people from Twitch, both staff, admins, streamers, moderators, viewers, the whole shebang. Come check it out. Cool. Is that it? Anything else? Uh, not really for me. I mean, I'll be busy as hell at PAX. Come say hi to me, but if I... If, I'm not going to blow you off, but if I say hi and I have to rush, don't be angry. I'm going to be pretty busy um, helping produce the show and hosting. So yeah. twitch.tv slash twitch if you want to watch... All my segments, um, I'll be hosting with DJ Wheat and John Carnage, um, Ezekiel the Third, Man vs. Game, and Spam Fish. Yeah. So oh, Spam's one. gonna be there. Yay! Finally, Wait, another what, EU person. What was what was that that you guys are doing? We're gonna be the six people hosting PAX East. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Um, and there's gonna be cool partner spotlights. Um, Eli Diction is going to have a spotlight on Sunday. Sir Scoots is going to have a spotlight about esports and what it's like to be the oldest man in the gaming media space. <laughs> is that actually the topic? Scoots. Um, it's, just... it's mostly about esports. Uh, it's going to be about esports um, okay. and being an esports partner, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, it's going to be really fun. We're not going to have a PJ Salton thing. Uh, that's going to you're going to see more of that later down the line. But it should be a really cool show. And yeah. Twitch.tv slash Twitch. Right just wanted to add, I saw in your Neil bot, you've got special little shout outs for all of us, which is really sweet, by the way. Thanks, Neil. Um, I totally had is... my mods do that. They didn't do that on their own at all. <laughs> I didn't just learn about it right now. Okay, well, sorry. Wow. Totally not Neil. Neil, you're still a disappointment. Okay, thanks, Neil's mods. You're amazing. You're awesome. You're the best. Yay, mods. Great, great. Um, but I just wanted to say one thing. It does say on mine that I may stream in the future, that's actually going to be happening. I'm not going to, not, not full time, but um, I'm going to start streaming. Once we get back from PAX East, I'll stream like once a week or twice a week or something like that. And it'll Leave us as it is mods. It's fine for now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I didn't get them in trouble. Oh. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm actually going to start doing that. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. sure. That's everything. Cool. Yay. Uh, Have a great weekend, guys. Yeah, I'll see you guys roughly the same starting time next week. No, no, I'm going to see you guys at noon noon Eastern or 9 a.m. Pacific. No, 9 a.m. Eastern or noon Pacific. Now, what the fuck time are we doing this show? Hold okay. on. Whatever, I'll be... see you guys fucking later for some, <laughs> uh, have like a, just, for some just honor bound. Thing. Yeah, yeah, right. it's noon, noon Eastern or 9 a.m. Pacific for honor yeah. bound and then like six hours later for role play solemn tomorrow. Right. So we'll see you guys around then. It's 7 a.m. for me, so I'm going to bed. Good night. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.